So this is the time I wanna talk about when I got popped in Japan with marijuana and almost did 10 years in prison hard labor. So there we are, second, third trip, world tour. We went to Beijing, we went to Brazil, we went to uh, Chile. We're all over the map. Thing was popping, we're all over the map. Me and my homeboy villain, we decided to dip out to Japan. I had just been there about a year earlier. You know, shout out to all my people in Japan, always showing love, always coming through, always showing support every time I touch down on the island. So, you know, here we are. I'm hopping out the plane, dipping through customs. I'm with an entourage of like eight people, minimum. Everybody's getting through and I'm like the most hype. I'm ready to hit the ground running. I'm ready to get it popping and I'm pumped. Everybody's getting through the secondary customs. I've been to Japan before. I've been there quite a few times. I know how it goes. After a long flight, you think you're just gonna get through and be out the doors, it don't work like that. You gotta wait to get your bags. And after you get your bags, you gotta go through one customs. After you go through that customs, you gotta go through secondary customs. So here I am, you know, same routine like we always do. All my homies are getting past, boom, 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 one pass, second pass, third pass, and they're all getting past getting your bags in first customs. I'm sitting there waiting, I got one bag, I'm waiting on my second bag. So I'm excited, not thinking nothing of it. Post it up for about five minutes, and there's like the whole thing's just spinning where you collect your luggage and nothing. And all of a sudden I see my bag pop up, boom, boom. I'm excited as hell. I'm like, hell yeah, there's my bag, grab it. We off, we're in, we're in Japan, I'm about to have the time of my life. Dipping out, I hit second or first customs, and I'm like, what's up? All excited, talking to the lady. And as she's looking at my ID and my passport, she looks up at me and I notice she's looking past me over each of my left and my right shoulder. And I just had a gut feeling right then and there. I turned around to the left and the right. It was about six or seven custom agents all officered out with their badges, the whole nine, hands on their guns, whatever they had. I knew it was something wrong. So I'm like, what's going on? Like, can you take a walk with me, sir? So I'm like, I'm supposed to be going this way. All my homies are looking at me like, what the hell's going on? I go to this way. <clears throat> Immediately, I knew there was a problem when I hit the side and it was like, you know, different offices and they had like things to weigh drugs and all kinds of shit. I'm like, what the hell's going on? So I sit down and they show me a paper. And on the piece of paper, I'll never forget this, it was a picture of heroin, it was a picture of cocaine, and it was a picture of weed. They said, are you familiar with these things? I said, of course I am. Those are drugs. I said, Do you, did you bring any with you on this flight? I said, hell no, nah, I ain't bring nothing with me on this flight. I'm trying to get to work. So there they go, pulling out my stuff. <clears throat> They're like, give me a second, we're gonna bring in the secondary inspector, inspector and all this stuff. So they come in, it's like they're like putting on their lab stuff, gloves, the whole nine. <clears throat> they start pulling out all my stuff. And as they're pulling out my stuff, in slow motion, I see them pull out a pair of shorts. Now mind you, this was a pair of shorts that one of my favorite pairs of shorts got extra pockets on them. I was just at George Lopez's celebrity smoking pool party like five days before that, seven days before that. And uh, I was on my way to Japan and I snatched those shorts up and forgot to take them to the cleaner. I was like, man, I'll just wash them out there in Japan or some shit, one of my favorite pairs of shorts when I'm kicking it. Well, when I was at that party, you know, kicking in with all these people, I usually roll up to parties like that with 30, 40 joints in all my pockets. So I'm smoking with Matt Barnes. I'm smoking with the drummer from No Doubt. The homie David Ayer was posted up. I mean, we're just having a good time. Cedric the Entertainer. Uh, shit, I think we sung uh, Happy Birthday to Anthony Anderson that day. I put one of my joints as a candle. I mean, we're just having a good time. Did, little did I think, seven days later, I'll be in Japan facing 10 years hard labor for forgetting one of those joints in my pocket. So there they go, they pull out the joint out of my pocket. <clears throat> and she's holding it up. And everybody in the room is making a big ass deal. Like they just found a diamond in my pocket. Like I'm from California, a joint ain't shit. The cop are looking at like this shit out of here. These fools are looking at like, oh, and all they're talking all in their other language. I'm, you gotta mind me, I don't understand a word they're saying. And they're going off and they're talking all this shit like, yeah, you know. So she comes to me and she's like, we found drugs in your bag, drugs. Not weed, drugs. Mind you, Japan is a very conservative country, very respectful. 
You know, shout out to all the whole island, man. I got nothing but love and respect for that country. I would never bring weed, especially the people out of respect to the people that brought me. Just out of respect, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I wouldn't want to mess nothing up, fuck up the money, mess up any of the show shit that I had going on. So I was really regretful that I forgot that joint. <laughs> so I'm sitting there and they're like, hold on, we're gonna bring a translator. So the translator comes and they're like, you know, this is a, a very serious offense in our country. And uh, they start talking about, you know, this is prison time and this is doesn't even need to see a judge type of shit. It just goes straight to hard labor. And it was no joke. <clears throat> so I'm panicking. So I'm thinking I'm going in the other mode. Like, how the fuck am I going to get out of here? I'm not trying to do 10 years in Japan, never go home to my family, never go home to be able to create my music and get back to what I do best. So I'm like, fuck, here I am, stuck in Japan. They're like, whose bag is this? It doesn't have his name on it. So I start playing the shit. That ain't my bag type shit. Little did I know it was my homeboy that I came with villains back. So now I st start hearing them questioning my homeboy in the back. I'm like, fuck. I can't do that to the homie, obviously. So I'm like, yo, that's his bag, but I got my shit in there. It's not actually his bag. They just switched the names, the tags. It's my shit, it's my joint. Boom, the lady starts coming, talking all that shit. <sighs> my homeboy is telling me that, you know, he, I didn't see any of this, but he's out there and he said that, you know, they make a couple phone calls. Now being in Japan, you gotta be invited by important people. You can't just show up to the island and do any business in Japan. So, mind, mind you, and to say the less, to say the least, I was invited by some very powerful, important people. Shout out to my people that brought me out. Shout out to my people that run the whole, uh, you know, Tokyo, Shibuya, all that area, Chiba, all that. So, we're there, and the next thing you know, I'm posted, and they're like, I need you to sign a letter of apology to our country and we're gonna let you go. You were invited by some important people and we don't wanna offend this person. Usually we would give somebody 10 years hard labor in our country. But because you're this person's guest, just sign this apology and we'll let you go. So I signed it and I immediately walked through the gates and I see my people right there ready to go. Rolled out like some bosses the whole night. I felt hella bad because, you know, they were waiting for hours for me and I fucked up the dinner plans. You know, shout out to everybody that was on that trip. But yeah, the people that I got invited by, if you guys haven't heard of them, check them out. They got books on them. They got documentaries in the, in the island of Japan. Very, very powerful people. My homeboy, Mr. K, that's plugged out here in Cali. Much love to my homeboy, homie K. Your boy, Mr. Criminal, be 10 years in Japan, hard labor, cracking bricks out there. Literally, that's what they give people for a joint of weed. So thanks to the power of my homeboy, the influence he has in this country and over his people, when they found out that he's the one that brought me, the whole shit shut down. The whole prison shit stopped talking. Everything just turned to apologies and let us let you go. So shout out to the homie, Mr. K. Shout out to my whole family out there. Japan crime family, you know how we do it, West Coast.